as you can see right here we have a new AIO coming from Cooler Master and it has an LCD screen compared to their past models that I reviewed so it's going to be definitely interesting because we have something more to talk about instead of just pure benchmarks. So in today's review we're going to talk about Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Ion. This is a 360 AIO with three pans of course 120 and I think regular thickness of the radiator but the design of the pump block top is quite interesting and I'm really digging it because it doesn't just surround the it's not the full LCD screen on the pump block top but it also has some nice surrounding RGB lights it has some Cooler Master written all around and then we have the 2.1 inch LCD screen that gives you a possibility to do literally anything so when we're talking about that you have a possibility to uh, place your thermals in single or dual sensor design you have possibility to place a clock gif uh, pictures to place a course all uh, if you want to go with i don't know thermals uh, then clock then everything else that i mentioned so far and loads of other options now since we're at the software and all the stuff that you have right here we have a software that is dedicated to push the maximum out of this AIO. So we're talking about uh, master control software that gives you an option to first regulate the speed of the fans, secondly adjust the RGB lights with groups synchronized or individual, which is quite cool, I do have to say. And you get to see all the necessary perform, well, not performance, but uh, details, thermals from the GPU, thermals from the CPU, load, and of course usage. Now, I mean, I don't mean usage by percentage, I mean usage by watts. And this is also quite interesting because it gives you more insights of the consumption of your PC, which is quite cool i do have to admit now when we're talking about connections and cables i do have to mention one thing so it has some sort of a proprietary cable running out of the top part of the cpu block which then gives you an option to control pwm of the fans because it splits into three-way splitter for three fans which are pwm then you have also uh, it's not a splitter it's just a single uh, five volts addressable rgb which connects to daisy chainable fans on top which have individual cables for addressable RGB and PWM. And then you have SATA connection to power everything up. But that's not all. You have micro USB, I think it's connection for the top, it's not type C. And it goes to USB 2.0 right below on the motherboard. Unfortunately, you can't place it above the motherboard and then push it backwards. You have to wiggle it through the motherboard down at the bottom because the cable is unfortunately a bit too short. And that's the only downside because we have cables we have unnecessary cables and to miss this opportunity to have an outstanding design because this looks brilliant i'm really digging it doesn't matter if i left it on rgb i really just liked color shifting possibilities here but if you go into the segment where you have a quite nice pump block top with a nice design static single color you can go with that as well and then you have cables and that's something you know but i would go past the pwm and adjustable rgb headers and the sata even but this one is going around here next to the motherboard and behind the gpu and i don't know you could manage it but if you have a naked motherboard without any passive heat sinks for your m.2 or anything similar to that it will be seen so yeah maybe Maybe I made a mistake, but I doubt that this was a mistake in those terms. So what we have here in terms of uh, some specifications, it supports all Intel sockets except for 20XX series and AMD AM5 and AM4. Water block dimensions are 88.3 times 83.6 times 65.7 millimeters. Radiator thickness is 27.2 millimeters and it's made out of aluminium. And the fan dimensions are 120 times 120 times 25, which comes to a point that we have 52.2 millimeters of thickness, radiator and fans. Then for the ARGB, we have a addressable generation 2 RGB. Fan speed from 0 to 2400 RPMs and the maximum airflow is 75.2 CFM, maximum air pressure is 3.63 millimeters HO, and mean time before failure is above 200,000 hours. Noise level at the maximum with all these packs that I mentioned is 30 decibels. 
we have loop dynamic bearing, 4-pin PWM and 3-pin 5 volts addressable RGB header. For the pump, above 210,000 hours, mean time before failure, nose level is at maximum 20 decibels and warranty is 6 years, which is quite interesting. I, I can't remember if I've seen uh, AAO that actually has that. Uh, of course, it supports ACSR Sync, uh, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, MSI Mystic Lights and ASRock Polychrome Sync as well, which is quite cool if you want to synchronize everything, have it all synced up quite nicely. Now, when we're talking about installation process, specifically on AMD, and since I mostly use AMD in my benchmarks to have more interesting um, comparisons, let's put it this way. It's quite straightforward. You have to remove those two retention brackets because the 360 IO has four locking positions on the AMD, which is better than two on the regular um, on the regular retention brackets that AMD gives with their boards. So what happens here? You have to remove those retention brackets, uh, place four standoffs, just regular four standoffs, uh, adjust the mounting bracket on your pump lock top. Then you have to remove one plastic foil, which uncovers, I think, seven, let's say, hexagonal shapes that where you place where you place uh, thermal paste and you spread it over them. After you're done with spreading the thermal paste over that, you remove the final sticker and you have those seven hexagonal shapes left with the thermal paste, which should be enough for cooling down your CPU and doing the thermal dissipation from the CPU to the AIO. Now, when you're done with that, you place the pump block top on your CPU and you have four locking nuts to tie it up and that's all there is to it. When we're talking about cables, our dimensions, so you have the cables running out of the top pump block top, which spread into three PWM, which you connect the fans, uh, one addressable RGB, but luckily the fans are daisy chainable. So that means they have one female and one male uh, cable running out of each fan. So you can daisy chain them all together and SATA. That's it. Of course, the USB 2.0 as well. So after that, you can, uh, you install the master control software and it gives you all the options that are over dimension. So with all of that, I would say quite cool. One thing I do have to mention is that when you take it out of the box, since the fans are pre-installed, what they did is they reverted the fans for the cables running out here. So in that scenario, they are either thinking, okay, people are most likely going to place it on front with the tubes at the bottom, or if they go on top and if they have a bigger case, the tubes will be running near the rear fan. But since we don't have here a huge case that actually can do that to run the tubes at the rear and it will well it won't hide the AIO but I was quite curious if it might be touching the GPU so I wanted to swap the fans on the other side giving you a possibility to reroute the tubes as such as I did. In this scenario you're pushing the tubes in a bit of a unnatural way for this AIO to happen because we had that on their Atmos as well. Regardless of that, it worked. And actually the tubes are nicely hidden. As you can see, you can see the RAMs quite nicely. You can even see the 24 pin cable if you have a custom slipped cables just for the visual aspect of the build. So in that scenario, you don't have to worry about the tubes touching the top fan because you still have a possibility to um, get that uh, certain wiggle of the fan of the tubes and you have two clamps uh, for holding the tubes evenly so that's good as well now without further ado let's check some uh, benchmarks we have ada64 extreme edition master liquid 360 ion cooling down the md ryzen 9 7900x 3d everything else is the same as in the past reviews, so we have CPU going up to 88 degrees, clock speed 4900 megahertz, and the GPU went up to 68. GPU is totally irrelevant because you already seen the review of the Cooler Master Master Box 600. But then we go to the Cinebench scores. So the thermals are quite interesting 83 to 82 degrees, which is a shocker because I usually expect it to be a bit higher. And then we go with clock speed 4975 to 5000. It varies through these 10 benchmarks. And the scores are quite nice. I have to admit, the, it starts at 26,309 and it ends at 26,438, which is wow. And some 
I would say some average is 26,340 50 and that is really great. One thing that helps with that is the pump, of course, um, not to mention the radiator, the fans and everything else. But we have Gen X dual chamber design of the pump. Apart from that, we have quite nice tubing, very flexible. I do have to admit, quite nice pump block top. I mean, I'm really digging the design, even though it's screaming all around Cooler Master, apart from their usual products that are nice and subtle when we're talking about their logos. For instance, monitors that have the stand with the Cooler Master logo, no writing whatsoever. Then we have the cases with a nice touch on the power button with the Cooler Master logo and everything else. And then you have this Cooler Master name screaming all over the AAO, but it looks great. It really does look great. And I'm really digging the whole design of all of it. The fans are really nice. And when you take into consideration that they go up to 30 uh, decibels at maximum, of course, you can really lower them down and find that perfect stabilization where we're talking about ideal decibel level and performance and that's it satisfied with the quick mounting possibilities definitely that's something that i do have to mention and yeah big thumbs up uh, cooler master they really did a great job with the screen because you can also adjust the speed of certain part of stuff that go on the screen uh, adjust the rgb and of course it's quite nice without a doubt so the link for the Cooler Master Master Liquid 360 Ion is in the description below. I'll place the Cooler Master uh, Master Box 600 because I did praise the case and I'm still loving it. It's really easy to build inside and why not just give it another go if you're looking for something that is more like old school, you'll definitely dig the case uh, with the back connect as well. So yeah, those two products are in the description below. You can check out everything that you need to know about those, including the prices. And that'll be all for today. If you're new to the channel and you still didn't, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I'll see you shortly in another one. Thanks for sticking by. Bye-bye. <laughs>